Good morning. Announcements. Uh, please do not forget that this upcoming Saturday, June the 24th, from 10 to 4, we're be having our family fun day. We'll have food, crafts, games, hay rides, music, and we encourage everyone to join and invite your friends. We want to fill it up. Are there any other announcements? Uh, birthdays and anniversaries, looks like Jean Looney has a birthday on Tuesday the 20th, and you'll be 91. And then, and then Thursday the 22nd, you Breen and Jean Looney have an anniversary. So happy anniversary. 71 years, 71, wow. That's it. Which do y'all prefer? You mean sing happy, how we used to do that? Happy, and a, and a birthday, and a birthday, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let everybody else stand and y'all keep seated. Happy and a birthday to you. Happy and a birthday to you. Happy and a birthday, God bless you. Happy and a birthday to you. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be in your house again. Lord, we are greatly appreciative of each and every father that you have blessed us with. Lord, we ask now that you go before us and you open our minds, our hearts, and our souls to receive your word so that we can go forward and use it to prosper this land. Lord, we are blessed that you are our Father and you do go before us. So for that, we say thank you, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. This time, let us collect our morning offering and, as always, find new ways in which we can spread the word of God and bring others to know the love of our Father. <laughs> Let's stand for the doxology. <clears throat> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him. God, you have blessed us tremendously in more ways than we can count. Father, you saw it fit to put us here on earth, and you blessed us with our lives. Father, you go before us, and you have plans for us. You guide us in each and every way, providing for us as you see fit. Father, we lift a part of this blessing back to you. We ask that you guide our hands and our heads to know in which ways to use it so that others can come to know the love that you have and that they can see the will that you have planned before them. For it's in your name that we pray. Amen. At this time, as always, I would like to open the altar for anyone who would like to come and lay your burdens before the Lord. But if not, please remain seated and take this time as a personal time between you and God so that he can prepare your minds, 
your hearts and your souls for the receiving of the word. Our sermon scripture for today is taken out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 through 12. I'm going to start in the middle of 7, so they call it 7b, 7b through 12, where it says, Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Surely you remember, brothers and sisters, our toll and hardship. We work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. You were witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. Before I begin, I'd like to say happy Father's Day to each and every one of you. And Father's Day to me just doesn't seem to have a very high priority compared to other holidays in, in society today. Because in contrast to Mother's Day, which is a huge deal, Father's Day gets kind of put to the back burner. And if you really think about it, if one of y'all men were to forget Mother's Day, you would be in, do in the doghouse until Father's Day. I can actually remember as a young child, a young girl, going to church and hearing the preacher preach these extravagant pre uh, sermons, praising mothers, holding them up to such great esteem, which mothers are awesome and they're great, and they should be held to a great esteem. But in contrast, the preacher would bash fathers on Father's Day. It would become more of a uh, what they were doing wrong instead of what they were doing right type of situation. And so it didn't really honor the dads that were present within that sanctuary. And it really hurt me to the core because that's not the people that they were ex explaining are not the people that we're preaching to so instead today dads this sermon is for y'all and I hope that you get something out of it and it lifts your spirits just a little bit higher because fathers do hold a very special place in today's society and it's a much higher place than they're given credit for See, today in American society, they seem to look at fathers as an expendable part of the family because they don't see the actual need for them. But we need to see that their, their level of importance needs to be reinstated because God intended for them to have this position. In fact, I've seen very strong evidence that points to the reason that America's 
morality and spiritual integrity is at a such an all-time low is because of the declining value that we have placed on the role of a father. And when dads are undervalued, so is the right relationship with our Father in heaven. So today, my goal is to remind dads, not to remind dads of their duties and their responsibilities as much as it is to encourage and remind all of us of their importance. We need to be reminded of the respect and the dignity of the role that the fathers hold. Because fathers really play an extremely important and vital role in our families and in our nation today. In Colossians chapter 3, the Bible, Bible introduces a hierarchical model of authority in the family. And it reads, Wives, submit to your husbands as fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. So in terms of authority, the father is deemed the head of the household. And in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, he is urged to manage his children and his household in a respectable manner. So the father is charged with the responsibility of looking after the best interests of his family, financially, spiritually, and socially. You know, just like us mothers, when a man becomes a father, he's not given a rule book on how to conduct himself. No one tells him how to manage his household. So it's something that he has to be, he has to pick up from sources, outside sources. And the first way is how he was treated by his father. The actual relationship and interactions that he had with his father. And second <coughs> is what he learns from his relationship with God and by the word of God. I can tell you, I can stand here and tell you the sense of strength and protection that my husband has exuded in his lifetime because he has always looked after his family. And while he may have not have shown the tenderness that I have, he has shown love equally as powerful to our kids. You know, people often have the perception that dads don't love their kids as much as mothers do because they're not as emotional or endearing. But fathers have the capacity to love just as much as any other spiritual being. It's just expressed in different ways. Because instead of a, a tender hug, it might be a fist bump or a pat on the back to let them know how proud they are of them. See, dads are just designed by God to express their love in different ways. They express their love when they guard their family and provide good things to their wife and kids. Almost 40% of kids grow up without a dad at the home. So we know that, that there has to be another example which they could follow to develop into good dads. And that's the example left by Jesus Christ. See, the best dads take their example from Jesus, and they pass the legacy of the Lord onto their family. The legacy of Christ and the love that he had is the greatest gift a father can give. And to be like Jesus in the way they manage their household is the greatest expression of love a dad can give to his family. When Peter asked the Lord how they were going to pay their taxes, Jesus told him to take a coin from the fish's mouth. This teaches 
his people that our Father, our God, is a God of provision. When he fed the multitude with a few loaves of bread and a few fish, he provided the example of a father who provides all the needs of his family. And he commands dads to do the same. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, says, Anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and in wor is worse than an unbeliever. In the same way, dads have the awesome responsibility of providing for their family. It may seem that their egos are wrapped up in their employment because they may feel ashamed if they were unemployed and not able to provide. But think about it. The brunt of the responsibility to provide for the welfare of a family unit rest completely on the shoulders of the husband. So dads are always striving to maintain a balance of providing for their family and spending quality time with their family. And scripture teaches us that there has to be a balance in their lives. And because men are hardwired with the desire to provide for their family, and make a good home for their children, there's a constant struggle to maintain this balance. So a, a man has to constantly look to God for direction and example on how to manage his household. And God's example is that he always provided for his children, but he never replaces that value with spending quality time with us. So while the provision is there in abundance, and our Father has always provided with us to us, He puts a greater value on how much time we spend with Him. You know, this past week, since Monday, we've all, my family spent the entire week together, and we celebrated my husband. And I can tell you, without a doubt, that the time, the quality time that we had will never get back. And no one can ever take it away from us. Those memories that will be in my children's minds the rest of their life of the time that we spent at the river and the time that we just spent laughing will carry on with them forever. And even though we didn't catch a single fish, we had a blast float in the river, and Matt even tried to lose one of my paddles. <laughs> but, and I asked my boys what it was about Matt that he has provided for them, and something that means something to them that they ta have taken on or will take on to become fathers themselves and they both answered with this that their dad has worked hard all of his life to provide for the children and our family no matter what if it took him working two jobs having to work late hauling hay two three o'clock in the morning and then getting up again at six and being at his normal job he did it and they never had a want for anything and so that makes them want to be just as hard workers for their, fa their future families. So with me saying that, and this God providing for us through our earthly fathers, there should never be an overshadow of the importance of the quality time we need to spend with them. And even though fathers often handle the discipline in a family, it needs not to be looked at as his sole role, as some children often do. Because when Jesus rebuked Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan, he portrayed the power of love through the act of discipline. 
not wanting Peter to be lost in the old ways of thinking. Now, discipline is a very difficult thing to take out. Um, and it's often, it's hard on parents, but it's often received not well by children. And the dad has to discipline, the parents have to discipline their children because they love them. Proverbs 3, 11 through 12 says, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father, the son he delights in. A dad has to discipline because he wants the best for his children. The discipline of a father sets the whole course of his family's life on fire. Children raised up with discipline of a strong father, loving father, and a disciplined father grow up to be disciplined adults. Adults that make a great contribution to society. I came across a story this past week of a young man who was making poor grades in school, particularly in math. And his parents, they tried various things to get him to bring his grades up. <clears throat> and none of them seemed to produce any improvement. Finally, they decided to enroll him in a private school. And at the end of the first grading period, the young man came home and proudly presented his report card to his parents. They were both shocked to find that all of his grades had improved. But most noticeably was math. He had received his first A ever in math. His parents were overjoyed and began to question him to determine what the reason for the improvement was. They asked, was it not the non-traditional teaching methods? He said, no. Was it the smaller size of the class with more individual attention? He said, no. They said, well, what was it that caused such a big turnaround? Well, the son replied, when I walked into the school on that first day, the first thing I saw was that man nailed to the big plus sign. And I knew I'd better take things seriously. See, discipline is the act of a father urging his kids to live in the right way for development and growth of his family. The father disciplines and urges his children to make them stronger. Dads express their love through protection as well. A dad place, will place himself in the way of trouble to protect his family. And Jesus applied this, <coughs> the, this perfect example for us when he laid his life down to save us, his people. So in the same way, a father is charged with the duty of laying down his life, laying down his desires, his personal interests, for the sake of his family. You know, I know that my husband did not want to do all the jobs that he had to do to provide for us. But he did it because it did provide for us. He never had the luxury to choose the career field he wanted to work in. But he used his hard, he's using his hard-earned money to help our children go through college so that they can go and be members of society and choose their field. He's putting their interest before his own. And one day, hopefully, we will be able to sit back and see the rewards of our sacrifices. Dads are 
the first line of defense for their family. And they often are the first area Satan will attack. Because he knows that if he can take down the leader, all of his subjects are soon to follow. But the primary gift, expression of love from a dad, is the legacy of salvation. There is no greater inheritance that a father can leave than that concerning eternal salvation. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. A dad who loves his family will do the best he can to lead them in the way of the Lord. That's why our scripture for today says in verses 11 through 12, For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. As Mark puts it, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? See, dads are extremely important people in our lives. They are charged with the duties of protecting, providing, and interceding for their families. They have the power to shape their families. And that's by the way that they live their lives every day. They are the first line of defense for their family. They are also commissioned by God to deliver the good news of the gospel to their families not just with words, but in the way that they live and they present themselves every day. Not just by the way they worship and pray on Sundays, but by the way that they worship and praise their families and God every day of their lives. The truth is, they have a vital role in the family and should be honored with much more than just a day that celebrates and brings to our mind just how much they mean to us. Because God knew that it would take a man to accomplish all the things necessary to fulfill the important role that he planned out. And they had to be strong enough to endure it and keep it all under control. And so God created the Father. So let's all say Happy Father's Day to each and every father, the ones still here and the ones gone on to be with our Father. Amen. Turn to page 482. Jesus is calling. <clears throat> I'll sing the first verse. <clears throat> Jesus is tenderly calling you home, calling today, calling today. Why from the sunshine of love will you run farther and farther? Lord, bless every father and every grandfather with the best of your spiritual blessing today. Let him know he's not alone in the task you have given him to provide for and support those under his care. Show him how much you delight in his work and affirm the value of whatever you have given him to do, both as a father or grandfather and as a child of yours. 
Lord, confirm his worthy daily so he has no reason to doubt whether he is loved in the eyes of his heavenly Father. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.